Hello everybody, welcome back to my movie review series. Today we'll be discussing Cloverfield. I watched this one yesterday for free on YouTube, either YouTube or Tubi, one of the two. But I um, watched it yesterday morning, I have seen it before, wanted to give it a, a re-go. Um, first time I watched it, um, was, it was a family movie night way back with my parents at some point. I didn't really, didn't kind of remember the overall gist of the plot, but didn't remember the entire thing, so I wanted to give it another go. I liked it a little better the second time through. So you know how we do it. I will give you my overall impressions and grade after reading the logistics of the movie as provided by Google. Um, if you have not seen the movie, would like to based off my brief comments in the description. You want to shut off the video because there will be spoiler alerts. We'll be discussing the plot synopsis and any character development along with similar movies and major themes. So Cloverfield was released in 2008, is rated PG-13, it is a horror slash action movie, and it has a runtime of an hour and 25 minutes. It says, as a group of New Yorkers, Michael Stahl David, Mike Vogel, Odette Utsman enjoy a going away party, little do they know that they will soon face the most terrifying night of their lives, a creature the size of a skyscraper descends upon the city, leaving death and destruction in its wake. Using a handheld video camera, their friends record their struggle to survive as New York crumbles around them. Let's see, no box office numbers. Uh, but I remember it having, it, the trailer of this one way back in 2008 had some buzz around it. It's, uh, Google says it's menacing, thrilling, and enig enigmatic. What did I think about it? Um, short runtime, anything under an hour and 30 minutes is of always of interest to me just because it's, it's quick to make some content out of. Um, like I said, I had seen the movie before. Um, a, lot of, a lot of different movies have the same take on the cinematography of a handheld camera, whether it's like the Blair Witch Project, Cloverfield, there's a movie called Bigfoot that I might watch, it has the same type of thing. Um, but just the, the presentation of the cinematography is a handheld camera as opposed to uh, point of view as opposed to the uh, third person omnipotent or whatever you would call it in um, in movies. But regardless, short run time, um, the biggest thing that I didn't like the first time watching it through was the handheld camera. I just gave, it gave me a headache because I thought the camera was very shaky. Second time through, the, the point of view handheld camera presentation didn't really bother me. Um, overall, the plot wasn't super novel. It was decently entertaining. Um, I thought the Hudson character, who's played by T.J. Miller, I thought some of the, the lines that were supposed to be, you know, like, um, levity, just lighthearted humor throughout, um, I didn't think it really worked. It wasn't really off-putting, but I just thought some of the lines of his character were just didn't really make a lot of sense for the theme of the movie. Um, no other real um, off-putting characterizations, but kind of the overall plot, the main driving force for the uh, characters, wasn't wasn't super believable to me. So overall, I'm gonna give it. I'll give it a B minus because I do like the genre, but better second time through. The first time I didn't like the point of view. It didn't really bother me this time, but just the overall driving force of the characters, which we'll discuss shortly, just didn't wasn't super convincing to me. So overall, I'll give it a B minus. Lower end of enter entertaining. If you have not seen the movie, and would like to. You're gonna want to shut off the video now. So the movie opens up, and it's just all, you get an opening screen. Um, this footage, it was from the event that took place in Manhattan, New York, and these, this is just the surviving footage. And so it kind of kicks off at the very end where it's like, this is just, you know, the camera that we found. And then you get introduced to Robert Hawkins, who is kind of on this date, or just, you know, they're kind of like waking up in bed after a date and uh, Beth is kind of sleeping, but they're just kind of flirting and just having a cute couple moment. And so you get some uh, flashback screens of them on this date, and then you get them, the setting is present day to 2008 um, in Manhattan, New York. And so Robert has gotten a job as a hedge fund manager, or invest relations or something in Japan, so all of his friends are having a go-away party for him. The main person that is holding the camera throughout the video or throughout the movie is Hudson, who's played by T.J. Miller, probably the only actor or actress that I, I recognized um, just from the face. But he's kind of the best friend of Robert, who is tasked with going around to the different party guests and, and filming you know, a vlog of people saying goodbye or giving them custom messages so uh, Robert can watch when he goes to Japan. 
So Robert has a brother, Jason. Jason is dating a girl named Lily. Um, Hudson has a crush on a girl named Marlena who's going to be coming to the party. So the first 10 minutes is just Hudson going around getting different people's video submissions. Then you see um, Beth shows up. Beth shows up with another dude, and Robert is obviously very visibly upset about that, jealous, or just feeling some type of way. Um, and Jason and Lily realize, or Lily tells Jason and Hudson that Robert and Beth had slept together a couple days ago or a couple weeks ago or whatever, and Robert definitely likes her, but he's just like, you know, we can't. Um, I'm going away for this job. So Beth leaves the party with, with her dude, I think his name is Travis, I think that's who it was. But regardless, Beth and her date to the party leave, Robert is flustered and um, taken aback that she's with another dude. And they go out, um, Robert, Jason, and Hudson, kind of like the boys huddling up to talk about the girls, go out to like the roof or just to outside of this New York apartment building. And so that's when the main plot develops a big, a big, um, a big explosion happens or a building hits. And at first they think it's an earthquake. They turn on the, um, they turn on the news and they say it's an earthquake. And then they go up to the, to the roof or back onto the roof and to see if they can see anything that's going on because it's happening right, right down the block from where they're at. And so they go outside to see another explosion or another big, you know, fireballs start raining down, so they run back inside the building, they get down to like the lobby floor, and then pretty early on you see the big monster that was described in the overview. Um, again, just a life, uh, Empire State Building type of monster, and a very typical CGI alien monster. Um, and so you, you kind of see like the leg of the thing walking between big buildings, and the, the viral part of the trailer when it came out at the time in 2008 was like you see the, the Statue of Liberty's head, which is also on the, the cover of the, of like the cover art for the movie. It gets like slashed down and it, the, the head of the Statue of Liberty goes rolling down the street. And Marlene is kind of shaking, there's a lot of dust everywhere. And Marlene kind of mumbles, um, you know, it, it's, it's huge or it was, it was eating everybody. So Marlene is kind of in shock. Again, Hudson likes Marlena. Jason and Lily are dating and Robert is kind of after Beth. And so they start, um, they start walking down the street, they start moving. Um, the military is now intervening. Um, you're, as the viewer, you already know it's a giant monster, even if you haven't read the description. Um, but they get huddled on to the Manhattan Bridge and the, this big tentacle of this big alien uh, invader comes up and smashes down, killing Jason. So pretty quickly, early on, Jason is killed. That is, that is Lily's boyfriend or hu and or husband, um, Robert's brother. And so now they're, they're kind of at a loss for words. Acting wasn't super convincing. Um, just, again, I don't, in, in a trauma situation, if someone dies immediately, it wouldn't be like a big emotional response. But just for whatever reason, the, um, the characterization response to the deaths were, were, just weren't super convincing throughout. I'm not really off, but I'm just not convincing. But regardless, now Jason has now been killed. And so they go and they kind of, they get off, because they were going to go to the Manhattan Bridge, and then they go down into the subway system. And so Robert is now absolutely determined that he is going to go back and try to save Beth. And so Beth's apartment is supposed to be right in the, the heart of where this attack has occurred. So I just didn't think that was super convincing. It's like, you know... Again, yeah, being not because like the love story. Oh, we want to go back and save somebody. It's like there's a huge monster ravaging through the town, and he's destroyed the buildings. That's the person that you're trying to rescue is going to live in. He'd be a little. It'd be. It just wasn't super. Again, not convincing as to the motivations as to what they're doing. What they're doing. Um, but regardless, now they're going to go back into the center of the of Manhattan and try to find and rescue Beth. And so they're down in the subway systems. They debate for a little while. Um, Hud, or Robert makes a call to his mother and tells him that Jason has been killed. Um, but they all kind of agreed to go try to help uh, Robert find Beth. And so they get into the subway system, they start walking, and then very quickly after they're walking, um, it's dark down there and the only camera or light they have is on the camera. So they turn the light on, then they see a bunch of rats running 
and one of the, one of the either Lily or Marlena is like you know there must be running from something, and so they switch to the night vision on the camera, and then you can see these there's the, there's a big monster and it's also dropping down like little parasite monsters to go and eat people. So again, they're kind of very similar to like the monsters in World of the Worlds or Pacific Rim. Um, but regardless. That's what happens. They have to fight. A couple of them jump on Lily. A couple of them jump on Hudson. Uh, Mar Marlena gets bit, and she has a pretty gnarly, gashing, gaping wound, and so they got kind of like on her shoulder. But she's been bit, but says she feels fine enough to keep going and trying to survive. So they move forward. Now they're walking through like a de uh, like a department store, like a Macy's or a clothing store, or something like that, and a big military presence comes up, pointing guns at them. And the military realizes they're civilians, so they take them to this kind of triage center or barracks or whatever makeshift headquarters they have. And so they're talking with there. You meet Sergeant Price, who's kind of a minor character, but he's like, you know, I can't stop you. Um, if you want to go try to save this girl, you know, you can get up here. Um, we're going to level the city at oh, 0600 hours, and if you're not on a helicopter by then, you, you, will, be, you will be decimated with the city. And so they agree, get Robert's gung-ho for his chivalry to save Beth. And so when they're at this little barracks place, uh, Marlena starts bleeding from her eyes, and she's like, I don't feel so good. And all the other people there who are kind of hustling and bustling around start screaming, bite, bite, bite. And they take her into this, like, poly, just this kind of, like, shower curtained room and just shoot her. Again, PG-13 is not graphic, but you just see, like, a blood splat on the, just like this tarp, the see-through tarp that they have set up. So Mar Marlena is now dead, so husband, Hudson's love interest is dead, uh, Lily's love interest is dead, and Robert, Lily, and Hudson are trying to save Beth. And so they find her apartment, it is literally like leaned over against another building that's still standing up straight. So they climb up the straight building and then kind of like jump on to the, the roof that's slanted of Beth's building. And they have to kind of like scurry up because it's at a big incline. They're, a they're able to find Beth, which I just did not think was super believable. Um, but she's like impaled with like rebar coming through her shoulder. And so they one, two, three, lift her off the rebar. Um, Beth is now, you know, she's injured, but she's mobile. Um, and so again, not really, the, the love interest was just not convincing. The, the acting between Robert and Beth was not convincing for me. But regardless now, Beth, Robert, Hudson, and Lily are able to make it down to the ground floor and they're able to get into helicopters. So Lily gets into the first helicopter, um, they f she flies away, and then Hudson, Robert, and Beth get into another helicopter. So as they're getting into the helicopter, they see these, um, the military dropping like carpet bombs, or I don't, I don't know bombs in the military at all, but they just start dropping these different types of bombs on this monster trying to kill the thing. Um, Hudson's all excited, but there's a big you know, um, blast cloud or just you know, dust thrown up into the sky because of the explosions they kind, of, they kind of think they're safe and then a big arm comes out of the dust and strikes the helicopter and so they crash to the ground Hudson is killed there um, Robert and Beth are both assume uh, I'm assuming a little bit injured um, but they're able to again make it to like an underpass very similar to like the concluding scene of the the day the earth stood still when they have all of the little micro um, bots going to eat all of the life on planet Earth. I mean, they're hiding under an underpass. Very similar scene to that. Um, I'm not sure which movie came out first. I think this one came out before um, the day the Earth stood still. But regardless, Jason and Robert and Beth are under this underpass. Robert starts recording his last message like, my name's Robert. This thing attacked us. It's already killed so-and-so people. And if you don't hear from me again, assume we've been killed as well. And so very shortly after that, you either start seeing um, more of the little things eat up, but regardless, basically, Jace, or Robert and Beth are presumed to be killed as well. So the only character of the main characters that really seems to live is Lily, I'm assuming, because they both begin to sell separate helicopters, and so it seems like Lily's helicopter doesn't get attacked, um, but I'm not sure. But regardless, everybody else of the main characters, all the main characters have now perished. So overall, again, yeah, I just like the genre. If not, it'd probably be like a C+. Plus. Um, their love relations weren't super interesting. Um, they're romantic. I like the romance part, uh, aspects of movies, as long as it's just like romantic comedies or romance movies in general. Um, the motivations, again, just as realistic. If all, all shit hits the fan and 
the giant monster starts ravaging the apartment building. The the main motivation for Robert to go try to find Beth just wasn't super convincing. Um, it's, it, unlike the first time watching it through, the point of view camera cinematography did not bother me. Hudson's lines were a little, God, it just didn't, didn't really work. So we're all know, B, B minus C plus, but you like the genre. So that is it for my review of the movie Cloverfield. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next one.